Our first witness is Konstantin Kissin, who's a Russian-born satirist, podcaster, commentator, author of An Immigrant's Love Letter to the West. Um, you're in love with us because of our notions of individual freedom, which, by the way, you think we're a bit dangerously complacent about. Why is individual freedom so much more important than collective freedom, security, prosperity, well-being? It's the bedrock of the success of the West. It's the very thing that defines Western civilization against all others. And we've had, uh, we talk always about it as a word. The easiest way to understand freedom is to experience a lack of it. Uh, I grew up in the late Soviet Union with stories of my parents and grandparents being sent to the gulag for things that they said or decisions they made. And so I think the easiest way to understand freedom is to understand what it's like not to have it. And that's where my concern about the direction we are traveling in now comes from because we are in a position where we punish people for the things that they say. Uh, and we do this because we've conflated words and speech with physical actions like violence. Um, and this is quite a deliberate uh, swapping of meaning, in my opinion, which then allows people to suppress opinions that they don't like in order to advance their own cause. Ash, Ash Sarkar? If I were to leap across the stage and tackle you to the ground, that would be an unacceptable curtailment of your freedom. Right? Quite enjoyable, though. But yeah. <laughs> Some people would pay very good money for it. That's my point. Um, but let's, let's say you were, you were in a violent frenzy. You were chucking chairs around. It would be acceptable for me to curtail your freedom in order to prevent harm to others. Yes. Right. So let's take a more passive example. Let's say I have a fridge full of food and you are starving and I don't want to give it to you. Should we be able to curtail my property rights in order that you might have the right to live, the freedom to live? So you want to take someone else's property in order to execute your belief in what I'm saying should happen? I'm saying you are starving and I've got a fridge full of food. Yes. And I don't want to give it to you. Should someone be able to make me give it to you? No. No, even though you would die? Yes. You would starve to death? Yes, because I believe in property rights. Do you have a front door in your house? I do have a there front door. There are people who are homeless. Why don't you let them into your home? I would say that property rights can and should be curtailed in order that others might live. So someone might freeze to death should they be forcefully entered into your home. I think if someone was freezing to death on my door, I would have a moral duty to let them in. A moral duty is a different thing. You're talking about compelling someone through violence. Right, you're threatening somebody with violence for not doing something you don't want done. So it's always right? violent to compel someone to share Compelling things when they've got too much. Compelling people requires violence, yeah. But how can you meaningfully be free if you are starving to death? How can a hungry man meaningfully be said to have freedom? I, I don't understand. What is the lack of freedom there? If you're starving, how are you free? If you're starving, how are you unfree? Because you cannot exercise your freedoms, you cannot participate in a community of people, you cannot exercise your political rights because you are dying. So freedom means being able to do things because other people have provided them for you, is that what you mean? I'm saying that freedom means that you are able to act on your human capacity for reason, for critical engagement, well, to participate in a political community, and you can't do that <coughs> if... It's a very strange argument. As someone who slept in a park for weeks and did go hungry, I don't think I felt any less free. I was just hungry. These, <laughs> these are different things. You, you think that, uh, that it's possible to participate as a meaningful political agent if you are on the verge of death? I mean, I'll be honest with you, when I was going hungry and sleeping in a park, participating in the political system wasn't my main priority. But... <laughs> <laughs> I didn't feel unfree, I felt poor and hungry and homeless. This is not connected to freedom in any way. Well, let's, let's... What you're talking about is you want to enforce on other people your wishes on how they should act in relation to property that they've accumulated, right? That's what you... You want the power to tell other people what to do with their property. 